Okay, this is a brief look at oxidation reduction, oxidation reduction reactions, and calculation of oxidation numbers. An oxidation number is a number that's assigned to keep track of these electron transfers that occur during oxidation reduction reactions. Now, here are some rules governing the calculation of what an oxidation number is. Oxidation number of any free uncombined element is zero. The oxidation number of an element in a simple or monatomic ion is the charge on that ion. That is, we want to use our ionic charge rules. And in any compound, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the elements in the compound is zero. And similarly, if we have a polyatomic ion, the sum of the oxidation numbers in the polyatomic ion needs to be whatever the charge in the ion is. So, I, so what you want to do is set up an algebraic equation that's going to set it equal to whatever the charge is, either zero or whatever the charge is. Now we need some reference elements. So fluorine has an oxidation number of negative one in its compounds. Hydrogen usually has an oxidation uh, number of plus one unless it's combined with certain metals, which gives it an oxidation number of negative one. Examples of that exception would include lithium hydride or barium hydride. It's usually going to be formulas that involve hydride. Oxygen usually is negative two, but there are some notable exceptions. In peroxides, oxygen's going to have an oxidation number of negative one, like hydrogen peroxide, for example. In OF2, oxygen actually gets an oxidation number of plus two. You see, oxygen typically is going to violate its rule in combination with fluorine or in some compounds with hydrogen, but does not always violate the rule with hydrogen. So let's determine some oxidation numbers of elements. Let's take a look at sodium nitrate. Based on the rules, we can get sodium being plus one because it's in group 1A. So that's our second rule. Oxygen is negative two because of rule seven. And so we can apply both those rules. What we don't know is the nitrogen. We're going to give that a variable x since we don't have a rule for that. And we can set up an algebraic equation and solve for the x. So set it equal to zero since rule three, because of rule three, and so we're going to say sodium plus the nitrogen plus three times the oxidation number of the oxygen is equal to zero. So we're going to say one plus x plus three times the negative two is equal to zero. So combining the constants, we get x minus five is zero, so x is equal to a positive five. And you want to include the plus sign on the number. Let's take a look at SO3 with a negative two charge. That's our sulfite. Let's get the oxidation number of each atom. Again, rule seven, we can assign oxygen negative two. We just want to solve for the sulfur. We're going to set the sulfur equal to X and set up our algebra equation again. So we're going to set it equal to negative two this time since it's charged as a polyatomic ion. So sulfur plus three times oxygen is equal to negative two. X plus three times a negative two is equal to negative two. So we get X equal plus, equals plus four when we solve for X. And again, the positive sign. Let's look at hydrogen peroxide. That was one of our exceptions. Now, if we apply the rules, we decide hydrogen being plus one and oxygen being negative two. We quickly see that's not going to add up to zero. So we're going to ignore the oxygen rule and apply the hydrogen. And so we'll just assign oxygen a variable of x, leave the hydrogen as plus one, and we'll solve for whatever x is. Setting it equal to zero, we'll say two times hydrogen plus two times oxygen is equal to zero. So 2 times plus 1 is plus 2, plus 2 times x is equal to 0. 
So we got 2x is equal to a negative 2, and then x is equal to negative 1, which is exactly what we said it would be when we said there was an exception to the rule. So that works out quite well. What about the other exception, OF2? If we try to set oxygen equal to negative 2 and fluorine equal to negative 1, we quickly see that's not going to add to 0 because you can't make two negatives add up to be 0. So that's not going to work. So we're going to use oxygen as the x and leave fluorine as negative 1. Solve for the x. So oxygen plus 2 times fluorine is equal to 0. So we'll say x plus 2 times negative 1 is 0. So x minus 2 is 0, or x is equal to positive 2, which is what we said when we said there was an exception to the rule. Moving on, let's talk about oxidation reduction reactions. And an oxidation reduction reaction, or simply called redox reaction, describes chemical reactions in which the oxidation number or oxidation state is changed. Oxidation refers to an increase in the oxidation number and corresponds to a loss of electrons. Reduction is a decrease in the oxidation number and corresponds to a gain in electrons. So oxidizing agents are some chemical substance that's going to oxidize some other substance that's going to contain atoms that are reduced and gain electrons. So the oxidizing agent itself is reduced, but causes the oxidation of something else. The reducing agent is a substance that's going to reduce some other substance, but it's going to contain atoms that are oxidized, and it's going to lose electrons. So what that means is the oxidizing agent is reduced, and the reducing agent is oxidized. Now looking at these reactions, what we see is that on the reduction, we're moving from more positive to less positive or more negative. Now, in the oxidation, we're moving from more negative to less negative or more positive. So movement in that general direction is a reduction. The movement in this general direction is an oxidation. So let's look at this reaction and determine which element is oxidized and which elements are reduced. So calculating the oxidation numbers, and just for the current tense purposes, we'll just, I'll just give them to you. But if we look at the iron, it goes from a 0 to a plus 2. And the copper goes from a plus 2 to a 0 you note that the sulfur and the oxygen stay the same. So we're looking at the iron versus the copper and not the other elements. So we see the cop the iron is oxidized because it goes from zero to a plus two. That's an increase in the oxidation number. So that's what we said in oxidation was. Now the copper is reduced because it goes from a plus two to a zero. So that's a reduction in the oxidation number so that we're going to say that copper is reduced. And this has been a short tutorial on oxidation and reduction and oxidation numbers.